right, YouTube, it is Saturday, November 16th, and as you can see, the Torino's on jack stands. We found another project that I would like to get done before I get back to making a mess and working on the power stroke. Uh, let me tell you what happened. The reason it's on jack stands, it is the tires are off of it. Nothing bad happened, it's just that um, the old tires that I had on it, the one, the rear one on the passenger side had a slow leak and it was getting annoying and I was having to air it up every three to four days. Finally, I came out here Tuesday of last week and uh, it was all the way down and it wasn't even seated on the bead anymore. So I said, to hell with it, I'm going to go ahead and order some more tires. Got some, these are not cheap, these are Mickey Thompson Pro Tracks. Supposed to be a reasonably sticky street tire. I know the other tires, that car, I never got to do any burnout videos with it, but that car would incinerate those other tires. They didn't have much tread left either. They were some old, hard uh, BF Goodriches. I think there was BF Goodriches. I'd have to look to be sure. But we got some 28 by 10s. Actually, the sidewall is 10.2, and the tread width is like 8.5. They recommend uh, tubes with these. I'm not going to run tubes because I'm sure I can get away with it. Actually, I run my slicks tubeless on the 64 Fairlane too. We'll be doing videos on that one day. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video of how to swap your own tires without taking them to the tire place. And I also have a bubble balancer. We're going to try to do a little bit on that too. But here's I got an extra set of rims. The uh, Rims and tires that were on the car are stored away in the shed. It was just easier for me to get my spare set of rims for this car out and mount them on those. They're already dismounted, so a little less work. I need to clean these rims up. But I'm going to show you how to properly clean your rims up so that your bead does seat well. And Yeah, okay. I guess that's what we're going to be doing this time. And after that, hopefully tomorrow... I will add, fill the 64 Fairlane with oil, oil and do a start up on it. It is, the oil is drained out of it right now. I've got it running. Well, blah, blah, blah. Well, we'll talk about that in the next video. But we'll do a start up on the 64 Fairlane in the next video. So, I have a tire changer. It's not an automatic one, an air powered one or whatever. It's just a, I think it was $35 or $60 something dollars. Little Harbor Freight job, it's right there. They work well, and I need to mount it somewhere. Uh, I used to have it mounted right here, which was not a very good place. And as you can see, I did this work that I showed in my last video. It's not a good, really not a good place for it anymore. I think I'm going to mount it on my 16 foot open trailer and just have it to where it's removable. Uh, the only issue with that is I won't be swapping any tires during rainy weather, but I don't do it that often so. And I have another way I can do it on my bench, workbench. I probably should show you that away. Alright, let me uh, get some stuff clean, tools out of the way and some stuff cleaned up and um, we'll start mounting some tires. Alright, first thing we'll do, we're going to prep and clean our rim so that we hopefully get a good seal on our bead here. Before I forget, I need to remove the old valve stem. I have new valve stems in the box somewhere in this garage and these type valve stems actually I could order seals and reuse these but I went ahead and ordered the old new ones just in case the valve in there is bad or the seats is bad but these actually bolt in as you can see the nut right there they come up through the inside of course and there's a rubber seal which you see this one has been squeezed together and dry rotted and split but you can buy just those seals I believe but I went ahead and got new stems. All you got to do to remove them is take the nut off. There's a little washer under it, a tapered washer. I'll show it to you up close. You might have to tap it with a rubber mallet or something. It's in there pretty tight. It's in there very tight. It's been in there for a long time. goes. And there's the rubber washer I was talking about. It just goes over top the rim there and the nut goes on and and you can't like I said you can replace them bushings. 
the rubber, yeah, the rubber seals. I'll save this for later. And I couldn't really find them, which I was didn't want to spend a lot of time when I ordered my stuff. I was it was up late on a work night, so sometimes we it costs more to go the quicker route, but an easier route. Now to clean these beads, we have two different methods. I'll probably use them both, or maybe just one is good enough. Uh, this is a can of lacquer thinner, but it's filled with acetone. You use acetone or lacquer thinner would work good. Put that old rubber on there and start wiping with it. And I also have some Brillo pads, just these right here. Or regular steel wool will work, but I kind of like having the soap on a Brillo pad. And I also have some hot soapy water. It's probably just warm by now. It's about 57 degrees out here, so it's going to cool down a bit. But it's all, even if you're going to take your rims and have someone mount them on a machine, uh, if you got a way to get them off so you bought your rims without tires or anything, it's a good idea to go ahead and do this because these uh, tire guys, a lot of them don't bother to do this, and that can cause you to leak at the bead. And it also doesn't, the tire will kind of glue itself on there after a while. And this tends to keep that from happening too. And for uh, street rides or hot rides, muscle cars with a lot of horsepower and your tires fairly sticky, even the street tires, especially with slicks. Uh, I'll get into that later on when we mess stuff with the race car. But it's very important that this bead glues on there. And I'm also going to show you another little trick that helps that glue on better later on. But first... Sometimes just the acetone or solvent is good enough. I always like to really shine it up with the Brillo pad. Can't get my lid off of this can. There we go. I'll just do it that way. Get a little bit of this on this old rag. You don't want to see that rag. It's old underwear. But these old rags I don't care about. They're kind of dirty, but yeah, that's that's getting the rubber off. When, it, when the rubber is really thick and gummy, uh, you might want to do use the solvent first, the lacquer thinner that is, or acetone. This isn't too bad, so it's probably not necessary. Just want to show you how it works. Just rub it off like that. It'll be good. But what really gets it nice and clean, once you get all your thick rubber out of the way, which in this case I don't really have to because there isn't a lot of thick rubber. Just take your little pad, I dip it in the soapy water. And just go around like that. Scrub that bead down. Sometimes it takes a little time and effort and elbow grease, but I think the result is very well worth it because you get a good tight seal on your tires. See that? See how much better that looks? And you can feel the roughness of that. That's your tires most likely. And of course when you're done. Uh, you want to get this soap off. Use some uh, solvent that will dry, make acetone or lacquer thinner again, and, and get your soap residue off. Now, another trick to help seal that bead is a uh, dishwashing liquid. Uh, not only does it help your tire slide on easier, but uh, I've learned from experience actually. Uh, a friend of mine that I used to drag race with uh, showed me this trick. Dawn dishwashing liquid, when you put it, if you put a lot on a bead, you don't want to put a lot of it. After a period of time, it kind of, um, it softens up the rubber for a little bit, and then after it dries, it sets up like glue. He had a set of tires. I didn't think we was ever going to get off the rims. Actually, we had to cut them into pieces and just beat the remaining tire off of it. It was just... Unbelievable how it would glue. I also heard that hairspray can uh, make radiator hoses and tires glue to whatever you want it to seal to. But if you use too much, sometimes it glues it on too well and you regret it when you remove it. But like I said, Dawn dishwashing liquid is supposed to be the stuff that really works the best. It will glue that your tire bead to the rim and it will be a good tight seal. And when you're running slicks, that's important because with a lot of horsepower, you can spin the tire on the rim a little bit. Actually, I've seen brand new slicks. I've seen guys uh, make the mistake of not putting screws in the rims. I'm not going to put screws in these rims. These are street tires. 
and I've seen them actually spin the tire and break the bead and the car just drops on the rim. And I've also put white marks on the tire in the rim and made a few passes down the drag strip with slicks now, not these street tires. And I've seen it move after three or four passes about an inch or so. So just to let you know, if you use if you're mounting slicks or if you have a really sticky street tire, do something to use, either use a dishwashing liquid or screw your tires to your rims. A lot of people don't like the way that screws look, but um, I have um, screwed them from the inside only, and I have run my big slicks on my fur lane without any screws. And uh, if you if you use the dishwashing liquid, it seals very well. Okay, I'm going to finish cleaning this. I don't want to show you the whole process. I'm going to clean both of them. And then I'm going to uh, clamp the rim to the table, show you how I do that after I get it all rigged up, dig up the stuff. And then we're going to start putting our tire on. Alright, we're ready to put our valve stems in. Here's the ones I ordered. Guess what? They're too small. See how that'll go right through there? Yeah, that, those aren't going to work very well. They're for a different rim. I, I misread the description when I ordered it. So, I may either hang on to these, maybe they'll come on, come useful someday, or I may just send them back. Not sure. Uh, I probably have to eat the shipping though, so it would probably be cheaper to hang on to them. But, here's the good news. My old ones, I happened to find some new seals for it. Here's how the seals go on. You can let's see here. If I can get it off without dropping it, I'm trying to do it in front of the camera here. There you go. There's what it looks like without the seal. And see that shoulder right there? That goes towards the top of the valve stem, and you just slide it on. And luckily, this one was missing the little valve in there, but I had a new valve in my toolbox. I always try to keep a few of them handy. I even keep them in the glove box of my little Ranger. You never want know when none of these things could just start leaking on you, and it'd be an easy fix if you had one, and it just screws in there like that. These little valve stem tools come, well, I think stuck in there right now. There we go. These little valve stem tools, you can get them anywhere. Walmart even. But, uh, yeah, you just screw that in. And there you go. For some reason it's wanting to stick inside there. Let me get my other tool. This one here has got a burr on it. And I think it's what's right sticking inside. I've got two or three of these laying around. Let's see if this one this one looks like it's made a little a little better. That one looks like some cheap harbor freight job. This one here looks like it's made a little better. And you just tighten it like that. And there you go. And then let me try to zoom in here sorry about the shaking but I just want to give you a close-up of what I'm doing and what I do I just take this right here just like that come from the other side and of course I clean that surface very well too and guess what I think my seals are wrong size for the rim Okay, I'm going to have to dig up another seal. Okay, I'm back. Guess what? I found a seal to fit. Okay, here's the one. Hang on, let me unzoom the camera here. There we go. It's hard to make videos by yourself, but you got to do what you got to do. Here's the old one. That, Even though this fit over the valve, that was too big for the hole in the rim, evidently. They have different selections for different rims, and right there, I luckily I have two of those in my toolbox. Didn't even know I had them. So, I'm going to slide this over here again, just like I showed you before, and I'm going to use a little bit of dishwashing liquid, just put a little dab on my finger, not a lot, just to uh, help it. It's a really tight fit in that hole. I just test fitted it before I turned the camera on. And so, in order for, to make sure it does seat up in there like I want it. Oh yeah, that slides in there a lot easier. And that dishwashing liquid will help kind of glue that in there and seal it. 
put my washer on just like that got it on and let me find the nut just put it on try not to cross thread it which it's wanting to do to me and you want to be careful at how tight you get it you want it tight enough to where it's not going to leak but you don't want to over tighten it because you'll squeeze that seal back this camera up it's a little too close maybe yeah, I'm just going to snug it a little bit. I'm not going to really crank on it. Like I said, the biggest trick is you know, use some kind of lubrication. Vaseline might be fine too, but I like the dishwashing liquid because it helps seal that rubber. And there you go. New seal. And luckily, I have another one, which I'm going to dip in my old bucket of soapy water and clean it. And okay, now I'm gonna do my other valve stem and then I'm gonna fasten my rim to the table. And we'll see how this tire mounting process goes. It's been a while since I had to do it this way. I like my old tire mounter that I showed you earlier, but I, it's kind of a chilly outside. It's not too bad, it's about 60, but it, it could start raining anytime. So we're gonna do it in here. Hang on. Okay, it's about four hours later, and the reason took me so long to get back to this point, I had to go to town. I realized that my seal from another valve that I found was hard and cracked and it was split right here. It was, it was really hard too. The other one was fine, but I'm swapping out both of these anyway. I found these at uh, O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I checked AutoZone, a place called Stuff for Cars. Um, you can walk through Walmart because I needed some more of this good stuff right here. The Dawn dishwashing liquid. No, I'm not trying to do a commercial. I'm just showing you what I like to use. But you never know. I mean, a lot of newer cars have aluminum wheels nowadays. So you might find something like this in Walmart. But you don't. Even AutoZone didn't have these. Uh, but O'Reilly's did. I forgot the price. I don't think they had the receipt out here either. So... If you need to know, just go to O'Reilly's. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Basically the same thing I showed you on the others. Same design. It's pretty nice to know that a place like O'Reilly's, when there's a bunch of them around in most towns, it's nice to know that you can pick up something like this at the last minute. A lot of times, most of the time you have to order this stuff for these weld wheels and stuff like that. But You get two different um, size bushings. I think it's for a... 435 hole and a 625 hole, which is 5 8 and 7 16 625 being 5 8 435 is almost 7 16 actually 437 and a half thousandths is 7 16 enough of the uh, decimal point versus fraction lesson but anyway we'll go ahead and stick this in nice new soft seal which will seal better stick these in and I've already got the other tire mounted. I wanted to make sure everything went smoothly and I had all the stuff I needed before I did the actual video on it. And these tires, at least the last one did, went on fairly easy. So, hopefully, this video will go smooth. You don't want, like I said, you don't want to tighten these up too tight. You kind of got to hold pressure with your finger against the back side until it gets tight enough to a bug in my face, tight enough to seal. I shouldn't be beating on the wheel wheels like that. That's pretty smooth. Maybe it's smoother than I need to. Now, the trick to doing this, what works well for me is bolting, or clamping your wheel down the table somehow. I have holes drilled in this table from past wheel and tire breakdowns and projects. I actually have a big lever tool that I made to break tires down and and with long enough uh, all thread to go through the center of the wheel and I used to have a piece in the middle to clamp it down with it was a big bar that would uh, break loose the big slicks and my slicks were 32 by 14, 32 inches tall by 14 inches wide if I can find a tool I'll show it to you real quick 
I may have to pause the camera to hunt that one down. It's somewhere around here. I may or may not remember to drag that out and show it to you. But anyway, back to what we was doing. Let's see, I had my bolts and nuts somewhere for the back side. Here we go, I just used a nut as a washer. Pretty much any junk you can dig up is good enough to clamp this down to the table. get too crazy with clamping it down tight, but tight enough where it's not going to move around on you. That's the whole idea of it, just so that wheel will stay still for you. It's a lot easier when it's not moving around on you. I'm sure a lot of guys, which I've done it too, have tried to um, mount tires yourself out in the driveway or something while it's rolling around, you're wrestling with it. And it can be done that way, but this makes it a lot easier. And keep that wheel solid. You know, we don't want to crank it down too tight. Bend our wheel and work it. Get this stuff out of the way. Now, another thing I wanted to point out. I know these tires, like I said, they're meant to be run with tubes, just like a racing slip would. And it's a pretty sticky compound. It's not probably not as not going to bite like a slick, but I got a feeling they're going to be better than what I had. But um, much like slicks, you see a V stamp right there. Uh, I think I've seen some tires that, that will actually be an H, which V stands for valve, which means you want to line that up with your valve stem. And, and when it's an H, that stands for heavy, which means evidently they check the balance of these tires somehow, I think. That means that is the heavy end of the tire. And you want to actually make it opposite of the valve stem is what I meant to say. I think I said line it up because your valve stem is a little bit of weight and you put that opposite. Well, when it says V, you want it lined up. When it says H, you want it opposite. H is the heavy side. V means that's the side you want to put your valve stem on. At least that's what I was told. Somebody could argue with me on that and I won't argue back because I'm going by what I was told. Um, I'm not the tire manufacturer, but I'm pretty sure you got when it says V, you line up with the valve because this is probably the heavy side, and if that's stamped H for heavy, you want it opposite. And that kind of helps balance the slings out, and I still have to balance it, and I'm going to show you how to do that with a bubble balancer. But first of all, we want to get out some uh, dishwashing liquid. Now, on the other one, I was actually able to push the, the first side of the tire on with no, with the help of no tools. Just used to what little body weight I got, only weigh 155 pounds, and what little leg muscle I got, and arms, and pushed it on. And if you get it at right angle and you got it looped up like that, it slides on pretty easy. Let's see if this one goes as smooth as the other. You kind of want to get the center of it laying on the rim so that the widest part of the tire is trying to be forced over there. And just kind of work it on like this and kind of use your legs and body to and stomach to push up against it. Kind of go from side to side and work your way on and boom, there it is. It wasn't that hard. I mean, I'm a little guy, so it's not like it takes a, a lot of muscle to do that. So now, I'm going to go ahead and loop up this side. Now this takes a little more effort, but the last one wasn't that bad. It, sometimes it takes more than one try. Sometimes it just doesn't want to go right and you kind of want to back up and try it again. Maybe walk off, drink a Coke or something. If you get a little aggravated, which this one wasn't that bad. And when your hands get dirty, the good thing if you're using this, about using this stuff is it keeps your hands clean. Gets all that hard to get dirt out of there. Actually, I had some dry skin and some black dirt embedded in my skin from work yesterday. I had to run a wire EDM machine. I had to change the filters in it, and that dirty water has got metal dust in it, and your hands get dry, and it gets in there, and this stuff has gotten it out. 
Well, enough about that. Now, like before, you want to kind of start forcing it on on the widest part part of the circle. And once it starts, you push in with your stomach and start working it in. I could almost do this without tools. And you want to be careful here. You don't want to get rough with it and stretch around. You just kind of gently right on. Kind of hold, try to hold this side down. Take your time. Don't rush it. And sometimes you might need two of them. I'm going to hold that part down with my elbow. Don't know how well you can see what's going on here. Okay. Let's try to work this end in a little bit. And like I said, push with your stomach so that you got as much room so that you're not stretching it no more than you have to. It's going. Now it's starting to go. After you get to the certain point, and I keep hitting my rim, if you get to a certain point, it'll stop fighting you and want to go on down. Sometimes you don't want to do too much at once. It makes it easier too, a little bit at a time. And you see how I did that and then I started pushing with my stomach. And now we got the hardest part over. Be kind of careful not to nick up your rim bead. I don't have any tire spoons. I should have, but I would need a pivot in the center for those to work, I think. And there it goes, it's on. Glad that went easy. That's not that bad to do. Especially these types of tires. Uh, selects are even easier because they are flimsy. And easy to work with. I'm going to take this off. Let's see if we can get this thing to take some air. Sometimes that's a little bit of a challenge to get that rim get that bead on there enough to where it seals good enough to where you can start actually filling it up with air without air escaping between the gap between the tire and the rim. Just take the cap off. I always have better luck when I stand it up. Oh, and I have to get air holes. It's way over here. I got a new air hose too. The old one kept kept leaking right here, and I kept clamping it on, and it just wasn't working out for me no more. This this is a Harbor Freight job, but it is actually a really nice heavy duty hose. Some of their stuff is okay, not everything. So a lot of cheap stuff. Find my air chuck, tire chuck rather. Now let's see if we can get this thing. There you go. A lot of times all you have to do is push down on it. I have had them really stubborn. I would take a tie down strap, wrap it around it, and crank it down tight. And that helps for the really stubborn ones to get started. Now, we're going to put about 40 pounds in. They recommend 30 pounds on these, but to get it seated, I like to put about 40. Leave it overnight or however long it's going to be before I drive it. Just to get the bead seated up in there. And that dishwashing liquid, the dish soap on that bead will help kind of glue it to there and it will soften that rubber up and when it dries it'll glue it on there. I know it sounds crazy but it works. I'm sure there's some other guys watching that's heard of that. I also heard of hairspray. I've never tried it. I've heard of people taking hairspray on radiator hoses. The guy was telling me that the guys who Ran pulling tractors like to do that, but they, the trouble with that was it adhered, it glued it on so well that when you need to remove the hose, it ended up having to cut it, and then you got all that sticky residue stuff on your hose end. That's not a good thing. Like I said, I've seen this dish soap do tires the same way. Like I said earlier, when we moved that gas slicks one day over here, we had to cut the slicks into a bunch of pieces and beat beat it off with a 
bead there. That wasn't too fun. They don't have to be glued that well. Okay, go put 40 pounds in it, like I said. And there's 30. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera. And I'm going to put the the other this wheel on the car. And uh, I'm going to wait till morning before I take it off the jack stands. And uh, we'll continue this video in the morning to do a little check the air and make sure it's still holding air. Okay, we're back Sunday, actually afternoon. I was getting ready to say Sunday morning, but it's actually afternoon. Been in the house all morning just doing some stuff, house cleaning, crap like that, because it was pouring rain this morning. Not too bad right now. It's warmed up a lot, but there's a lot of threat of tornadoes and whatnot. So... I just waited until I at least quit pouring rain, and I'm hoping, I saw a little blue sky, I think there is a little bit of it, I'm hoping it'll break up, but they're talking like there's, after the air warms up, chance of really bad storms and tornadoes, like I just said, but, so, that's why the truck is not pulled entirely outside, which kind of makes it a little bit of a hassle, but uh, we've got plenty of room to do some balancing. Good news is that, um, the uh, t both tires held air last night. Uh, I'm going to show you how to balance these on a bubble balancer. I'm really hoping that I have all the weights. I think I do. So let me get everything in here and set up and uh, we'll see how that works out. Alright, before we get to balancing, there's one thing I remembered that I mentioned last night. I was going to show you if I can find it. And here's that tool that I made to uh, break the bead down on my tires and this will work on the slicks and as you can see it's pretty much self-explanatory you see see it sitting there it's kind of custom fit for a 15 inch rim I guess I would have to uh, make another one if I had 16 inch rims or or even smaller actually it probably work with a smaller but this thing is made to where it's a close fit to there so that it gets right there where it needs to be and press it in the way it works this tire would be sitting on a bench if you remember how I had it how I had it clamped up last night run your all thread all the way through here down into the tire and then bolt it to the table had a nut on the other side of the table when the all, all thread went through it then you just draw it down and uh, it works pretty well it's kinda like a a threaded press is what it does and for the for those of you who don't want to Take your huge wheels and tires to the tire store because sometimes they uh, tend to get a little skittish about that big truck tires and big slicks and stuff like that. You can do it yourself. Just want to show you that real quick before we go to balancing. Okay, here's a good look at my bubble balancer here. Let me take this camera off the tripod here. Unfocus it and basically all it is, this piece here is spring loaded and as you can see it's got a little bubble level right there and with nothing on it, it always stays pretty much perfectly in the middle this cone here is to center your wheel let me put it on and I'll show you how it works if, uh, it might not be as accurate as the computerized balancing but then again maybe it's Maybe it is. You never know. I guess it depends on your experience with balancing. I don't have a lot of experience with this thing, but I've had good luck with it. I always set the wheel outside face down because I like to put all my weights on the inside where you can't see them. And what I do is I always put the wheel on it, make sure it's centered up, and then I uh, hold it in position. I always kind of do that too just to get everything loosened up on it and I kind of eyeball that bubble up by holding it in that position then I let go of it and actually this tire isn't bad at all it's pretty much there and sometimes you might want to do that see if it recovers and goes back a lot of times it won't And when you do it that way, now if I hold it in position, it 
wants to kind of stay there, but it also, it moves a little bit. You, know, you just kind of want to play with a little bit. Push it all the way down that way and then let it see if it goes back to where it should. And it seems to need, no matter which way I lean it, it seems to lean in a way that it needs some weight right there. And I have two different kinds of weights. Flip this around so I can see if I'm showing you everything. Um, I got some old leftover. I saved these off of old wheels and tires. You can reuse them. These are the old clamp-on type. They're, I like, always like to put them on the inside. And here's the old stick-on type, which are good for these aluminum wheels. You can recycle these or reuse them. All you need is the double-sided uh, and mounting tape. It's just as strong and sticky as the original stuff they came with. Pretty much the same stuff. And, I, and if I use these, I'll show you that. Uh, on this wheel, the other one's already balanced. So on this wheel, I think I'm going to use these just because I don't feel like going in the house and getting that tape. But what I'm going to do is just lay my weight. Let me focus this camera again. On the high side, I kind of want to put it right in line of where the bubble's off. As you can see, that already moved it a little bit. And I pretty much do it like I was just doing before. And I tell you what, it's pretty darn close. It, it seems to recover back to where we want it. I may want to, yeah, I think I'll leave it right there. Let me get this camera off here and I can show you a close-up view of the bubble. Just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. Okay. As you can see, it's pretty much lined up. And like I said, after you put your weight on there like you just saw me do, you just kind of throw it off and see if it recovers. And like I said, a lot of people may argue that computerized balancing is better, and maybe it is. But for guys that like to do same things themselves, this works, and this is the way they used to do it. And cars went down the road just fine before the computerized balancing ever came about. And this thing, I think this balancer, it's a Harbor Freight job. I would like to find an old school from an old shop really good USA made one maybe it'd be better maybe it wouldn't this seems to work fine but um yeah I've, I've had good luck with it and especially with big slicks I've been told I think I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video or not so if I'm repeating myself I apologize but I have been told that slicks do not balance well on computerized balancers it's just because they have a very thin sidewall and you know how they wad up when the car leaves and stuff these tires is not the case but I'm just talking about slicks and and you're better off with a bubble balancer and uh, I have had uh, the huge slicks like what's on my 64 Ford balanced with a computerized balancer I've had some guys that seem to know what they're doing and did well and I've had other guys put a ton of weight on them and the car would shake your teeth out at the end of the track so it's probably mostly in the user but anyway I'm going to see if I can't reuse that old Wait. Oh yeah, it, and it stays right in there, and I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. I could probably be picky and get it even better. It's not off as much, but on the back of a car, I don't think I'm going to feel any vibration at all on it. Probably wouldn't on the front. I'd say that's good enough. And that is how you balance with a bubble balancer. It's pretty simple, really. And if you like to mount and balance your, want to be able to mount and balance your own tires on your old hot rods and stuff, and you don't like taking your aluminum wheels to uh, some of these tire stores where these guys will scratch the heck out of your aluminum rims, well then, that's this is how you can do it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and put these wheels and tires on the Torino. And we'll call this a video, get it on the ground, see how it looks. Alright, there they are. Just wanted to back it out for a little bit, get a little 
look at how they look. They're pretty close to the same size of the radials I used to have on it. I like the looks of the uh, bias ply tire on the older car. It gives it that nostalgic look. Even though I still got radials on the front. Might see if we can find something that's good for, uh, you know, fairly high speeds in a bias ply. I'm sure you can find them somewhere in front of this. This car used to have the old steel GT wheels on it. I like the welds on it, but I would like to have the old GT wheels back on it, maybe to, just for a change the scenery on the car, you know, a little different. But just a little walk around. The tires are over inflated right now. They're supposed to hold 30 maximum, but whenever I see the new tire on the rim, I pump it up about 10 over and let it stay tight for a little while. Before I drive it, we'll let them back down to 30. But there's how they look. They fit in there pretty nice, pretty much perfect size tire for this car. So, that's all this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you got some helpful tips or at least enjoyed it. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing a video on, um, I think I'm going to do the fire up of the fair lane. I thought it was going to be today, but it probably won't be. Bad weather is moving in, so I'm pretty much done for the day. Thanks for watching.